Hi, this is Vanessa. Welcome back to Skipping with Jesus. I have a word from our Commander-in-Chief, our Messiah, Christ Jesus voice. This, um, this word, I in the previous video, I said um, July 17th that there was a shift in the um, spiritual realm and um, specifically on um, doors opening um, and um, divine assignment opportunities um, becoming available and um, the building of, of uh, blueprints beginning and um, ministry downloads that are starting um, that God has um, given out through the Holy Spirit to um, for the will of his kingdom to be brought to earth. Um, so many things have been happening and just just in my realm and I am hearing from others that God is just um, doing some wonderful, wonderful things in lives and um, so, the first word that he gave me on the morning of this of July the 17th of 2024 was at 107 and it was a message that the Holy Spirit was giving to um, uh, to the bride um, from the bridegroom and um, it was the bridegroom and the bride's um, relationship today and um, it was almost like the song of Solomon for today and um and this word is specifically speaking to um it was um, our commander in chief's voice and he's speaking to us regarding his, the title of this is my little people's promised land my little people's promised land and when he speaks of little peoples they are children they are our children that he is speaking of because it is at that point that the enemy is attacking and um, trying to put in strongholds to rob our children of the gifting that, um, that the Father has given them in their design and his purpose for them. So he is calling us to as his warrior bride to uproot and tear down those dominions and those strongholds that um, he had that he has set up within our school systems within um, the public um, um, places regarding um, our children and um, this word as I was um, praying about it, and the Holy Spirit brought back this vision that I had. Um, this vision was probably back in, um, I would say March of this year, last of February, first of March, and it was regarding a mama bear, the, this vision that I saw. And um, I saw this vision in my, um, yeah, I was looking like an observer. So it was my spirit that was seeing this vision. So, uh, cause I was standing back looking at this mama bear that was standing up on this ridge on this, and the valley of was down below, but it was on this mountain ridge that this mama bear was standing and she was standing in front of all these cubs um, and she was standing in attack mode, like she was standing on her back legs with her her, her claws. Um, very, I remember them being so sharp and the, like they were they were um, like in attack mode. And she was roaring. This roar was echoing down through the valleys and just bouncing off of the mountaintops. And but these cubs that were behind her, I remember them. Um, being um, what what was I, I had a knowing 
that they were um, they were orphans. They were um, children that were abandoned. They were children that um, was being trafficking. They were they were they represented the children that um, Abba is calling us to um, protect. And um, as I was looking at this um, mama bear, all of a sudden, it was me. It was me as the mama bear. I went from being like a spiritual, like in my spirit seeing this mama bear to actually being this mama bear and protecting these cubs. And there was a cave that was behind me and I was, as I was roaring, protecting these cubs, I looked behind me and I could see like these, this, uh, the line of, of other uh, mama bears coming out of the, the cave, like coming out of their hibernation, coming out of their hiding. And as each one would come out, that, the, they would like fall in line on the outside of these cubs, but fall in line with me, like circling these cubs, and then would join in this roar of, of um, protecting these cubs. And um, as I, when I was, re, when I was um, having, after I had um, scribed this word, that our commander in chief gave me to scribe for him, I remembered that vision. And I was like, oh, it's Abba, it's your time. It's your time that these other mama bears are gonna be coming out to join me to protect the the children and to build, to, to uproot and, and tear down the strongholds that are, have been in their generational bloodlines and then to build, uh, build a um, home, build a community that protects and, and, and pours into these children of who you really are, um, the love you have for them and, 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 um, maturing their gifting that you have given them instead of this instead of the enemy robbing them and uh, of 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 who they are in Christ Jesus Abba is calling all these ma mama bears out to actually protect our children and to build an environment that um, that um, they can be raised as uh, to become, grow up and mature in Christ Jesus and be these mighty warriors for him. So that is um, what I am seeing coming from the 17th, um, July the 17th, that these, um, a fulfillment of that actual vision, okay, and then this is giving us the details of how we should go about fulfilling that vision that that Abba um, gave me and I know it was probably six weeks two months after I had that vision that I started hearing um, prophetic voices talking about mama bears or esters esters and mama bears but that um, Estras and Debras and Mama Bears, that was uh, the, the language that was coming from the prophetic community. And I was like, Lord, you've called me. You've called me to be one of these Mama Bears. You've called me to be a Deborah. You called me. You've called me. And I gladly surrender and do whatever it takes to bring your kingdom to earth for your little people. So before I get started into this spoken word that marries with this written word, I'm going to say a word of prayer and then I'll get right into what the commander in chief has given us as an assignment. Holy Spirit, here am I totally surrendered on Abba's altar. 
um, Abba, I pray that you will pour your, just pour your fire into me, burn the dross away from my heart. Let it be all of you and none of me. Lord, for this time in your eternity, I thank you for placing me to be one of your warriors, to be one of your bride, to bring forth your kingdom into the earth. I pray for revelation and more revelation and more revelation and wisdom, Lord, that I might be a representative of your kingdom and bringing light to this darkened world. I pray that the downloads that you give me and the blueprints that you have given me, Lord, that as you bring the people into my life, that they have these assignments that I could speak into them, those details that you are wanting them to have that activates the what they already know is their mystery, their ministry or their calling or what you have to told them that they need to build, that I activate in them through the Holy Spirit speaking through me the urgency of the time to, to, to get off the sidelines and get into the action of bringing your kingdom to this earth. And everything we do, we bring to the glory of your son, Jesus Christ. And Holy Spirit, here am I, speak through me what the commander, our commander in chief spoke to me the, early that morning. I pray that the anointing flows out and it lands on the hearts that need to be cultivated to mobilize this word that we just don't hear this word that it actually takes um it takes a, a, a root and it grows and propels the kingdom of god through the the lives that you have called to build and to, those that you have you've called to uproot and those you've called to build and those you've called to harvest those that you've called to fight in the front lines to protect our children those that you've called to build the wall around them those that you've called to build the temple lord the temple of ezra and is where you've called us to start and we and through the book of ezra we have our blueprints of, of building the neighborhoods, of building the communities that will house the single moms, that will, uh, that will um, protect the children. Um, and I pray, Holy Spirit, that this goes out and ignites a fire of passion throughout our nation of where we need to begin to bring the kingdom of God to the earth. It is with our children. Let us uproot the evil that has taken of the fatherless and, and the strongholds of the bloodlines of generations past. Lord, that those of us that have have been chosen to stand between the gap of our bloodline and our grandchildren that we take a stand and those that have taken a stand and 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 those um, strongholds have been uprooted and torn down and that our grandchildren are able to flourish in in uh in being nurtured and loved in the admonition of the abba the father and the relationship of jesus christ with the holy spirit flowing through their little bodies to bring glory to honor to jesus christ may we be that instrument Oh, God, Abba, Father, pour the fire on us. Consume us with this passion for the children. Consume us with this passion to tear down those strongholds. I pray in Jesus' precious name. Holy Spirit, here am I. Here am I, Holy Spirit. Use me. Use me. Anoint these words to go out and land on fertile ground. As, uh, as the Father's will and purpose for our lives in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. My little people's promised land. This time, as I said before, this was the second time he woke me up. The first word was regarding um, um, the bride and the bridegroom. 
and it was spoken by the Holy Spirit. This one is spoken by our commander in chief and the timestamp of 5.34 a.m. is relevant. 5.34 in the Greek Strong's Concordance is, the, the word is A-P-A-R-T-I and it means from henceforth, from henceforth, from this time forward in other words, in Thayer's Greek lexicon, it says, from now, from now, from this point, henceforth, this is what we're going to do. Abba, Abba has uh, um, said to us through his, the commander in chief, it is from this point forward, from July the 17th of 2024 at 5.34 a.m. from henceforth, now on, this is what you're going to do. And the um, written word that's married with this spoken word is found in Esther 4, 13 through 14 in the New Living Translation. And it says, Mordecai sent this reply to Esther. Don't think for a moment that because you're in the palace, you will escape when all other Jews are killed. If you keep quiet at a time like this, deliverance and relief for the Jews will arise from some other place, but you and your relatives will die. Who knows if perhaps you were made queen for such a time as this? Were you made queen for such a time as this? That we stand for the for our children think about it this is what our commander in chief said to us as you sacrifice yourself on the altar of surrender my fire will consume the dross from your heart igniting you with my holy fire to move forward to to concurring the land i'm sorry to conquering my holy fire to move let me start over as you sacrifice yourself on the altar of surrender my fire will consume the dross from your heart igniting you with my holy fire to move forward to conquering the land i have promised to you in establishing my kingdom my beloved you know the road ahead will not be an easy charted way. It is uncharted and there is no duplication or blueprint in your natural abilities you can follow. It will be your spirit united in perfect unity with the Holy Spirit that will lead you, guide, and construct the building of my safe havens for my little people. For I have heard their cries in the darkness of night, the terror they face daily with no relenting of the evil they are enduring. I am sending you as my cavalry to rescue them. You will build walls of protection around them, teaching them of my love for them. I have raised many Esthers and Mordecais to join you in building the promised land for my little people. You will know them by their fruit, discerning them through knowing as the Spirit speaks to you. They will know their assignments, have been trained and refined by my fire. They will have the same passionate heart as you for my little people. I will send them and they will find you. You will know them as being called by the Father's perfect plan and purpose according to his will. Esther hid her secret until which time I used what she carried in her heart to save my people. Mordecai was my gatekeeper and watchman. He guarded access to Esther while in my timing delivered my word of warning to her. Esther was chosen by me to be in the appropriate place and time 
for the one divine assignment I had for her to accomplish, to save my people. My warrior army, it is for such a time as now I have strategically placed you to go and gather my little people, rescuing them out of the grass from the enemy of their little souls, bring them into my sanctuary of my love and safety. You have been prepared and know what lies ahead of you. I will provide the resources from my kingdom in plenty. Go forth now and remove the enemy from those places I have shown you, for in those places will be the refuge and safe haven for my little people. I have, surrendered, I have surrounded you with my protective covering. I have given you the authority to walk into the dark places the enemy has set up his camp. Uproot, tear down, build. Uproot, tear down, build, our commander tell, says. Now in the time now is the time in my eternity to move, move into position, taking back what belongs to me. Remove everything, and I do mean everything, that is not a representative of me and my kingdom. For this day, July 17th of 2024, I have prepared for the walls in my little people's promised land to come down says God of angel armies. And in Joshua 1, 5 through 9 in the New Living Translation, it says, No one will be able to stand against you as long as you live, for I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. Be strong and courageous. For you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors I would give them. Be strong and courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Study this book of instructions continually. Meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. In Isaiah 22 and 22, I will give him the key of the house of David, the highest position in the royal court. When he opens doors, no one will be able to close them. When he closes doors, no one will be able to open them. In Isaiah 61, 1 through 4, in the Passion Translation, it says, the mighty spirit of Yahweh is wrapped around me because Yahweh has anointed me as a messenger to preach good news to the poor. He sent me to heal the wounds of the brokenhearted, to tell captives, you are free, and to tell prisoners, be free from your darkness. I am sent to announce a new season of Yahweh's grace and a time of God's recompense on his enemy to comfort all who are in sorrow, to strengthen those crushed by despair who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful bouquet in the place of ashes, the oil of bliss instead of tears, and the mantle of joyous praise instead of the spirit of heaviness. Because of this, they will know be known as mighty oaks of righteousness planted by Yahweh as a living display of his glory. They will restore the ruins from long ago and rebuild what ha was long devastated. They will renew ruined cities and desolations of past generations. 
In Jeremiah 1, 4 through 10, the Lord gave me this message. I knew before I formed you in your mother's womb, before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nation. I, sovereign Lord, I said, I can't speak for you. I am too young. The Lord replied, don't say I'm too young, or in my case, I am too old, for you must go wherever I send you and say whatever I tell you, and don't be afraid of the people, for I will be with you and will protect you. I, the Lord, have spoken. Then the Lord reached down and touched my mouth and said, Look, I have put my words in your mouth. Today I appoint you to stand up against nations and kingdoms. Some you must uproot and tear down, destroy and overthrow. Others you must build up and plant. And in John 1, 50 and 51 in the New Living Translation, Jesus asked him, do you believe this just because I told you I had seen you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than this. Then he said, I tell you the truth. You will all see heaven open and the angels of God going up and down on the Son of Man, the one who is the stairway between heaven and earth. Then finally in Revelation 14, 12 through 13 in the New Living Translation, this means that God's holy people must endure persecution patiently, obeying his commands and maintaining their faith in Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this down. Blessed are those who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, say the Spirit, says the Spirit, they are blessed indeed, for they will rest from their hard work, for their de good deeds follow them. Oh, Father, 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 that we may lay as a sacrifice on the altar that you have called us to sacrifice our lives, even if it takes our lives for our children, for the next generation. Do we not see with our spiritual eyes that the enemy attacks the children, robbing them of their gifts, their divine gifts that you have given them, that when they grow to be adults, they are so traumatized by the enemy that it takes years for them to heal, to even become restored. Yes, you can do it suddenly. Yes, you can do it suddenly. But why, why do we stand by while our children are trafficking to sex? Why do we stand by when mothers are carrying children for Satan to sacrifice on his altar, a, 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 a satanic religious sacrifice? Why do we allow these things to happen? Why do we allow the incest, the abuse that happens through generation after generation after generation? Have we not no spiritual eyes to see? Do we not have the heart of the Father? He's calling us. He's calling us to our children to form communities for single moms and their children. I know that Abba has downloaded through the Holy Spirit blueprints done like he did for me that I have released. I am released. He is wanting those that have buildings to open those buildings for abused women and their children, uproot and tear down those enemies' strongholds, surround them with the love of Abba, get off your circuits of political gain, of religious spirit, and look to what the Father has called us to do. There is no time to delay. 
Who is going to stand between the gap of the generational bloodline curses and cycles and what the kingdom, Abba is calling us to bring the kingdom to earth? Do you not see what the enemy is doing? Just in this last week, it had been brought to my attention that there is mothers that Satan has identified to carry a, a baby in her abdomen, in her womb, to be sacrificed on Satan's altar. Do you not call that out? Do you not call it out? Do you not go and uproot that evil? We are so blind. We are so selfish. We fight for our laws, but we do nothing about it. We speak divisive words of po from politics of a religious spirit, of a judgmental spirit, but we, yet we don't have the eyes to see what's actually happening in the supernatural realm. Why is it? Why is it? Are we so blind? Why is it? It's not, if it's not our child, it doesn't matter. We've got our children protected. But what about that? those parents that don't know where their children are? They've been taken. And who knows in those dark rooms the evil that they're having to endure? Abba has heard their cries. And I'm telling you, he is very angry that our lack, our fear of man, our fear of the darkness, because we haven't matured our spiritual sight to see what where we need to stand, what what gaps we need to stand in. It could be in our own home. We know our children are being abused late at night while we lay in our beds. What's happening in that other room? What's happening to the girl next door that suddenly got pregnant and she she carried to term, but what, where's her baby? Do we not care? Awaken. God is awakening us. It's time to take off our blinders. It's time to stand up to the darkness. It's time to expose the darkness. Even these things that are being done in the dark places of our churches, we sweep it under the rug. We don't want it revealed for fear it puts a mark against our denomination or against our leadership. But yet that soul has to suffer in torment because of what was done to them. Could it possibly be that that soul never comes back to knowing or uh, having a relationship with Jesus Christ for what was done to them? I know I'm going a little long 
but I feel like the Holy Spirit just brought something to my mind. And I believe this goes along right with it. At the end of my, when I wrote my book, and I've told you this before, the, end, the, the day, the day that I sent my last edits off, it was a Sunday, the day I sent, within two hours, a report came out regarding a certain denomination, and I'm not going to mention it, that had over 700 complaints of abuse from leadership within that denomination. It, they were actually in a database. And when that report came out, I was like on this day that should have been so joyous. Should have been that I had finished my book, so much healing had taken place. Suddenly this dark cloud came over me. And now I realize I was sensing a grieving heart of my Lord. Because the generational curses within the bloodline had bled over into the church. And at the time, I hadn't matured very far because I had just come through some healing. But at the time, all I could think about, if there were 700 that had reported it, I could tell you 1,400, 2,100, who knows how many had been abused by either leadership or someone in the church. And because it was swept underneath the rug, those precious souls suffer the torment in the mind that the enemy keeps the campfires going continuously of shame, guilt, condemnation. Was it my fault? And then as I have continue to grow and heal, I realized, oh my, oh my. My heart started going out to the ones that had abused the predators. Because you see, there was something in their bloodline that they didn't receive. They didn't receive the healing that they needed and they continued it within the most vulnerable, those reaching out for help, those more than likely at had already suffered trauma in their life. And here they were reaching out for help and getting where they should have found help, getting more trauma laid on them. What happens to those souls? What happens to those souls? So I ask you, Are you gonna be one that stands on the sideline? Or are you gonna be one who stands in the gap? In the gap. Or maybe you're even one that God is calling into those dark places where the enemy's stronghold is and you have to walk into his camp maybe you're 
a sheep dressed up like a wolf instead of a wolf dressed up like a sheep. Maybe God is dressing you up as a wolf, but you're a sheep going in for him to rip that baby off the Satan's altar. What are you willing to give to save a child? Has Abba been stirring in your heart to build a community for single moms and the children? Do you have an empty building that you can put bunk beds, that you can put women in crisis and their children in? I'm asking you, if you know of these places, but you don't have the blueprint, I ask you to reach out to me. Reach out to me. Abba has given me the blueprint. He is wanting us as his bride to provide the promised land for his little people. I love you all. Sorry I took so long, but this is a heavy, heavy word and it's a command from our, our Christ Jesus, our commander in chief. I pray, Holy Spirit, I have emptied myself of the word you've given me. Go out and do what needs to be done. Shake us, shake us, Lord. Open our spiritual eyes to where we see. Give us a burning passion for our little people. That we don't only just protect our own little family, but that we have this burning righteous anger inside us to protect all children in your precious name and we'll give you all the glory and honor jesus this is for you this is for you this is for you i love you jesus I pray if you haven't, um, if you don't have spiritual eyesight, I pray that the scales will come off and you can start seeing in the spiritual realm what God is calling us to do. If you haven't subscribed or given me a th given this a thumbs up, this is God's channel. God is using this channel to further his kingdom on earth. <sighs> share it. Share it. Share it. <laughs> I love you all. May he find us skipping down those uncharted paths. Building those neighborhoods for single moms and their children going into those dark places and uprooting the strongholds, the witchcraft, the demonic spirits that are holding our children captive. It's time. This is the spiritual warfare we're in. I'm telling you, he's exposing, he's exposing. He will allow you to see if you want to see, that's the key. He will allow you to see if you want to see. If you want to do action, he will give you the blueprint. He will give you the contact. He will open the doors. God bless you. Until next time, I love you all. Bye-bye.